Hello and welcome to another Ilham at Home session. This week, artist Ahmed Fouad Osman will be talking about the meaning behind the recollections of long lost memories, an artwork that is included within the body politic and the body exhibit, held in collaboration with Singapore Art Museum. Thank you, Fouad, for being part of this Ilham conversation series. Hi, thank you for having me today here. So um, I was just wondering, what inspired you to make this artwork? Well, uh, yeah, I, I uh, produced the work in uh, 2007. A year before that, I was in uh, Korea for a year-long residency in Goyang. Yeah. So um, it was during uh, the residency outside. Because a lot of people start to ask you a lot of things about you, yourself, your religion, your country, your culture, your food, you know. And a lot of things that you thought that you know a lot already. But in fact, when they started to ask you about all these uh, small and simple things, then you started to think that, oh, there's a lot more that you don't really know about, you know, yeah. self, your country, your history, a lot of things. But it happened when you are outside, not when you are inside your own comfort zone, you know. And then uh, when I came back, 2007, uh, I applied for another residency in Rimundahan. Uh, Malaysia was also celebrating the 50th anniversary of independence. So everyone was really talking about the reflections within these 50 years of independence. You know, what have we achieved as Malaysian? I went to one of the exhibitions in uh, Petronas Gallery. Mm -hmm. And they put out a show, a, a small, uh, it's a collections of photographs. Yeah? Yeah. This is yeah. historical collections of photographs. And in one photograph, you know, imaginary uh, images that came to me. Oh, you know, it's a small, very small uh, picture. In this small picture, Tunku Abdul Rahman, he was alone. But somehow I saw this um, you know, contemporary figure trying to interact with him. Wow, this is interesting, I thought, you know. And then uh, I went to another photo. And then I saw another figures and then it keep, you know, going that way. So I thought, wow, this is, this is something that is interesting for me to explore further. So when I went back, um, that day, I, I started to look back into all these um, old photo photos, you know. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, with, with with all these photos, I started to see imaginary images popping, you know, out to all these these old photographs. So that's where I started to really uh, go deeper into this uh, project, exploring it further. Okay. Wow, that's that's super interesting. So you talk about the inspiration point of it, but I was also wondering what was the process, both physically and conceptually, when making these 71 slide projections? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, actually, the, the, the project started with paintings. Oh, okay. Because when I first saw the, the photographs, it came to me that, you know, the, in the forms of painting. Oh, wow. Okay. In the process of doing the painting, then I thought of, hey, it would be interesting also to have just uh, one character to, you know, to travel back into times, you know, different different period of times in Malaysian history. And uh, I thought, well, of course, it would be impossible for me to produce paintings, mm -hmm. right? And um, so um, uh, for, for paintings, I have a different characters, different people, different models, you know, in mm -hmm. each uh, pictures, in each paintings. But for the uh, photo projects, because uh, I think it would be interesting to have just one single uh, character to travel back into time, which at that point I have not uh, fixed any date yet. Yeah. And so um, I thought photo would be the best medium to represent the idea. So um, uh, I started to collect all those photographs again. Then I started to draft them, you know, how to start, which period, and, and uh, to end in which period. 
then I have to have the right character also. This is like a, a filmmaking. You have to yeah. cast, to, to, to have the right uh, cast for this. Yeah. And of course, at first, I wanted to put myself, because I am the one who is really interested to go back in time. Yeah. I'm able to do that, right? Because I'm the one who wanted to know about abolition history. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know much about it yet. You know, I wanted to go there. But I tried to put myself in the photograph, but it, it doesn't fit in. I mean, the character is, is not, it's not right some, somehow, somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I have a specific um, ideas on this, this single uh, person. Because I, I need someone who could carry the uh, ambiguous uh, character, ambiguous uh, identity. So we don't really know who he is, who he, where he's from, whether he's Malay or Chinese or, or from what background. We don't really know because when I put myself in, people, <laughs> you know, could uh, automatically pinpoint me into this categorization, mm. which I don't want. So I need to find someone who has this character. So I I spent I think a lot around um, uh, two three months going around looking for this right character. But it ended up one day, he's also one of my friends, old friend, but really didn't remember him at all. But one day I met him, then automatically I know that, oh, you are the one that I was you know, looking for a few months now. So I started to talk to him, explaining to him about the nature of this project, why this and that, you know, why I need this kind of character. Mm-hmm. And um, luckily, he's interested to be uh, in this project. So that's, that's how it, it, it goes. Yeah. That's uh, really funny because when I first saw it, I, I assumed that it was automatically the artist putting himself in, you know. Yeah, when reading the blurb, everyone's like, oh, that's actually someone else like who is this guy so that was a big question for me was like who is this person and what does he mean to you and how does he fit into the conception behind the piece and stuff so yeah that's really interesting that you needed like an ambiguous character i I don't want to 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 have um one single uh entry point Mm. this world so you know everyone have their own entry point whenever they, they saw this, this work. So that, that's what I want. Yeah. So when talking about the genesis of this piece, you have been quoted to say that some of the events are not mentioned in the mainstream history books and some not in the way that it happened. Um, so why can't I play with history? What do you mean by things like not in the way it had happened, seeing that there's no objective account of history? Yeah, because I think everyone knows that yeah. History is written by the victors, right? Yeah. The winners. So, for 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 some some video works, I did some some uh, editing process, and I liken history is you know something a little bit like this, because you have so many materials yeah. in front of you, but you just select few images to suit your narrative. Yeah. But then there's a, a lot of other things also. That, that's a part of, of the process, part of history, but you didn't take it, you know? So history is like that. So did you find that out while you were researching this piece in particular? Yeah. That yeah. things were kind of missing. So in, in, in that sense, did you feel like your project was kind of a way of critiquing it then to destabilize um, yeah, just, just, just for example, you know, in, in the process of doing it, if you remember the work, mm-hmm. um, there's no Anwar Ibrahim in it. Yeah. So when I was, was uh, researching through all these uh, national archive and uh, some historical, uh, I mean, mainstream history books, there was no Anwar Ibrahim. But everyone knows that he's part of the history. He's yes. important yes. history also, but he was not there. So in the work, Anu Ibrahim is also not there. Yeah. And I think it's easier for me to talk about this uh, because I didn't put him there also. And it's, it's good to, to, to give an example. They don't want him to be in the history of Malaysia. So would you say that like that historical event, like Rafa Masi 
or um, you know, and Anwar Ibrahim, do you think that you would like to explore that part of history in the future? I thought of that already. I wanted to expand it because uh, the work has been there since 2007, 2008, mm-hmm. more than 10 years now. Yeah? So uh, I'm thinking of uh, producing a book of the work. Maybe this uh, neglected or abandoned uh, part of, of history will be um, in, in the book yep. as an alternative history. Okay, so you've kind of talked about your works as being false memories. What do you mean by false memories in this instance? The photograph that I chose for the project started uh, from 1860s and, and on 2003. I call them false memories because most of us now, today, we didn't really go through that. It's just uh, in, a, in a history book, in, in the archive, you know. So it's, uh, we, we are really detached yeah. from that uh, period. It's, it's not real. Not real. It's someone else, you know. Uh, the experience is different. You know, we, don't, we don't really feel it. For me as an artist, uh, when I went through some experience, and produce a work and uh, to um, take somewhere that I didn't really experience it and to still produce it as a work is a two totally different feeling for that mostly I, I call it uh, false memories but of course some of them I went through uh, some like Mamali you know if you heard of, of this Mamali you know, it's something to do with the um, uh, history of, of my hometown you know, so I went through that. I, I still remember whatever that happened that day and all that. So it's part of the work. These are the things that I call false memory. I don't know whether it's there <laughs> or not, you know. Yeah. So I just, just refer it as that, yeah. Yeah, because that's really interesting because when you think about photographs, it's some, something that people look at as being objective, you know. They don't think that the photographer has any capabilities of producing an image that shows something that could be skewered. So how did you go about getting your images, like the source images? I started from whatever that's closest to me, from all history books that I have in my collections. Mm -hmm. I started to browse them, you know. It doesn't have to be really politically important. Yeah. You know, some of the photographs is really personal for me because when I, I thought that it's funny or it's interesting in some ways, then I would choose it, you know. And some of the photographs, of course, because of its significance in, in the history of Malaysia. It goes um, both ways. And, and then I went to National Archive and Memorial, like Razak Memorial, you know. But is there like a specific historical event that you would like to have explored in Malaysia? that you think is also been pretty archived? Um, or left again, yeah. one, one of them is the Mamali incident, which mm-hmm. uh, happened in my hometown of Baling, Kedah. I think I was from five at that time. You know? I still don't, don't really know what happened that day. So if I have a chance, I wanted to meet some people there and maybe have a special project just on that incident alone one of the um, dark history of Malaysia. Where were you when that happened? Uh, I was in the village in Berlin, and one of the um, people died in the incident. It's my neighbor. Oh. And, uh, yeah, uh, about 13 people died in the incident, you know, uh, including the policeman. I don't really know what really happened because there's a lot of versions. Until today, I haven't really had opportunity or what, you know, I didn't really get back to that yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hope that you do someday. I mean... Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's pretty dark, but there are so many histories, like the May 13th riots, right? As a nation, I feel like we should be talking about these matters more. Yeah, because it still pertains today. Anyways, so you recently had your mid-career exhibition at Balai Sunil Nagara, and it received public attention due to matters of institutional censorship. This exhibition was entitled, At the End of the Day, Even Art is Not Important. Was this an ironic title? 
Yeah, it, it became ironic, uh, you know, towards the end of the show because it went through a lot of turns and twists, yeah. you know, the, um, the show. Mm -hmm. And the title itself uh, can be read through different, different uh, perspectives. Until today, I think um, art somehow is, is not really uh, being looked as something that is really important in, in a society. You know, I, mean, I mean, psychologically, people look at it as something as that also. Yeah. Until they left school and then they go to work. So art is not important. You know, it's just um, a hobby. When you have some money and you have uh, ample time, then you can do art, you yeah. know. But for a living, you have to do something else that is more important. You yeah. know, because from the grassroots, from, from, from there, you know, your, your education, your art education is, is like that already. But uh, for the show, um, it turns out that ironically, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it became important again. Yeah end of the day because uh, whatever that happened and the support that we get from the you know society from the art fraternity is very strong i didn't expect that you know well it shows that you know at last i think at the end of the day it is important do you think that art artists and art institutions can invoke real societal or political change in malaysia when they present something uh, clearer, right? Yeah. I think it will uh, attract more attention. Arts, <clears throat> it's not necessarily just visual arts, you know, it could be writings, it could be film, you know, the right content, the right materials mm -hmm. with the right um, way of presentation. I think it could change people because it could change the, their perception with this project it proved to me that even older generations some of them they don't really know quite a lot of things when i present this yeah. they came to me and i said oh, hey, what is this where is this what happened yeah you know yeah and then for the younger generation because of this single new character in this old photograph yeah they wanted to know more, it able to stop people. It was interesting also how the role of arts you know, can uh, re-look into history and try to reinterpret history in new ways. Yeah, yeah thank you so much thank for your time. You. Thank you for having me. It's, it's good to discuss all these things, especially uh, recollections of long lost memories because it's quite an old work. You know, I haven't been talking about the work for quite some time. Uh, for that, I thank you. Yeah. No reason. So for those watching, if you have any questions, feel free to message us at Ilham Gallery KL on Instagram. Or if you want to contact Fuad directly, his handle will be included in the description section. So thank you for tuning in.